Shmerel, are you sure this is a good idea? Why, Betsy, of course. This is Shrita. It's very painless. It'll take very quickly. Why am I doing this again? Well, Betsy, you're about to become a Korban Shlamim, a peace offering in the Mishkan. You see, in Perk Yud Zion, that's chapter 17 of Ahikra, God commands the Jewish people not to eat meat outside of the Mishkan and to slaughter it right in front of the Ohel Moed, the tent of meeting. Punishment for not doing this is very severe. Why is this so important? Well, you see, Betsy, Hashem did not want the Jewish people to be like idol worshippers that slaughter sacrifices to all sorts of false gods, like the potato chip god that you have to bring in by bringing sacrifices of salsa. You made that up. Well, yeah, all idols are sort of just made up, and that's why Hashem does not want the Jewish people to be like that and to only serve the one true God, Hashem. Ooh, I get it. But what about these days that we don't have a Mishkan or Bet HaMikdash? Well, Betsy, these days we are allowed to eat meat at Jeff's Gourmet or any other fine restaurant, but you got to be careful not to offer a korban, a sacrifice, outside of the Bet HaMikdash. Ooh. Thank you, Shmerel, for teaching me. Hey, Betsy, I got some more laws about respecting meat to teach you about in Parakut Zion. As long as it'll delay the Shrita, let's learn. What's going on over here? Well, you see, Betsy, Hashem commands the Jewish people not to eat blood because the soul of every living creature is in its blood. And eating that blood would be a tremendous disrespect. No, I agree. Eat chicken. Uh, Betsy, that's a different commercial. Uh, oh, yeah. Anyway, so the way it works is we have to get all the blood off the meat before we can eat it. No, how do you do that? Well, you see, Betsy, we take the meat, which has got a lot of blood on it. We soak it in water. No, splash. After it is soaked in water for a while and all the blood is rinsed off, we take kosher salt. I didn't know salt needed to be kosher. No, Betsy, it's not kosher salt like supervised by a rabbi. Salt is kosher as long as nothing is added to it. This is salt that has coarse grains that will stick to the meat. That's pretty cool. Anyway, then we take the meat, which is totally covered in salt, drop it in a bowl that has perforations so that all the blood can drain out through those perforations. This takes about an hour. After that hour, we take the meat, we got to wash it again and make sure that all of the make sure all of the bl- salt with blood gets rinsed off there. And we wash it a couple of times and get all that salt off and then we could package it up in a nice double wrapped kosher package and it is kosher what smart laws your Torah sure teaches you guys great things why thank you Betsy what's going on in here Shmarel well you see Betsy the next law about respecting meat is that after a chaya or an oaf a wild animal or a bird is slaughtered and the blood spills out you have to respect it since the life the soul is in the blood. So that would be a dove, would be a bird, a duck, a chicken, these are kosher birds, or a deer from the chaya, the wild animal family. No, deer are kosher. Yeah, Betsy, you didn't know your cousins? Your deer cousin, get it? No. Does it have split hooves and chew its cud? It sure does. Wow, I didn't know that. And then a behema, however, does not have to have its blood covered so wait, let me get this straight. When the blood is on the floor, you have to cover it with dirt? Why? Well, that shows respect for it, that it shouldn't just be left open. No. And why aren't cows and sheep covered as well? Well, Betsy, I saw in the Ramban a biblical commentator who comments that the cow and the sheep and other domestic animals called behemot, or behema for singular, is usually used as a karban, so its blood is being used for a holy purpose. So therefore, it doesn't need to be covered because it's already being used for holy reasons.
Moo, that is interesting. Moo, what's going on over here? That animal looks very, very sick. Yes, Betsy, unfortunately, that animal is very sick. And this animal is going to be what's called a nevela. A nevela means an animal which has died through sickness or old age. That animal may not be eaten by Jewish people. And similarly, a trefa, an animal which has been injured in any way or attacked by another animal, may not be eaten. That's probably better off than only animals that have proper shechita, right? That's right. That's you ready to go on with the shechita process? But how are the kids going to remember what happened in this parak? What's up, Jack? Huh? Betsy, what is going on? Meet my friend, Vayikrodak. Vayikrodak? Mm, that's right. I am Vayikrodak. Anyway, I'm going to teach the kids about Paragod Zion. That's chapter 17. It's chapter Duck, you see. Uh, Duck, I don't really get it. Well, you see, it's a secret code, as we know, because the number... One is hidden in the D. See, the D has got the hidden one over there, that line, that's the, that's the one. And the O is a vowel, and vowels in our secret code don't count. And the C, well, the C sounds like a K, a K. All right, a K, duck. So what does duck have to do, what does seven have to do with a K? Well, don't you know that in the K, there's a bunch of hidden sevens. Seven, seven, and here's an upside down seven. Oh, wow, Doc. That is pretty cool. Yeah, that's why I studied in medical school for so many years to become a Vayikra Doc. A Vayikra Doc? What does a Vayikra Doc have to do? Well, a Vayikra Doc, first of all, you know, the Shrita is a very delicate procedure, see? You gotta shake the animal just so, very painlessly. No, Doc. Hold still now, Betsy. Oh, I didn't feel a thing. And the next thing you need a doc in Vayikra Paragat Zion is to advise you to have a good diet. You see, no blood on your diet, okay? Make sure to follow the doc's advice. No eating blood. Okay, doc, we got it. And the next thing is you got to dis- follow the laws of hygiene to dispose of blood. You know, you don't just leave blood. You got to cover it with dirt. Doc, you are very wise. And finally, I suppose you're going to examine the animal to make sure that it's healthy. Eh. What's up, Doc? I'm supposed to be the one doing the talking around here, see? Yeah, I got my, my carrot stethoscope over here, and I examined the animal. Hmm, are you going to get sick? Are you going to be a novella, a sick animal? Or maybe you have some punctures? You got an injury? Are you a trefa? Mm, I'm healthy, Doc. I'm healthy. All right, send him to the Beta Mikdash to be a carbon shlamim. Oh, <coughs> actually, I got a cough. Eh, nice try, Doc. So, remember, the Vayikra Doc is telling you how to keep the laws of kosher in Vayikra. Just call the Vayikra Doc. Thank you, Doc. (laughs) That's all, folks.